Hi Mommies and Daddies, welcome back to MomCom India. In this video, I am trying to help all my mommy friends out there who have to join back work after maternity leave. Now the biggest concern in their mind is about their child's safety, about their child's growth, feeding, health, development. All of these are big, big concerns when a mother has to go back to work. She feels that a piece of her heart is left back at home and how will he or she be taken care of. So in this video, I'm sharing some tips which will make your transition back to work easier and which will give you some relaxation and some motivation that you really don't have to quit your jobs. If you take care of a couple of things, then life can really, really be simple. Uh, but अगर आप एक हिंदी व्यूअर हो तो इसी टॉपिक का हिंदी वीडियो हमने अपने चैनल पे कल डाल दिया था प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू ऑल्सो फॉलो अस ऑन इंस्टाग्राम एंड फेसबुक एंड इंश्योर दैट यू सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल मोम कॉम इंडिया बाय हिटिंग ऑन द रेड बटन बिलो फॉर सो मेनी इन्फॉर्मेटिव वीडियोज ऑन पेरेंटिंग नाउ लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो सिंस आई लिव इन इंडिया एंड इन इंडिया अ न्यू मदर गेट्स सिक्स मंथ्स मटर्निटी लीव I have written down these tips as per that guideline. If you are in a different country where the maternity leaves are totally different, then just adjust those uh, timelines as per your maternity guidelines. So tip number one is something that you need to do at work. Now assume you have to join back work after six months. I suggest that at least two months prior, what you need to do is contact your boss and contact your HR to explore certain options that can offer you some more flexibility for some more period of time. Now let's say your baby is only six months right now and the next one year I feel is absolutely crucial because of a couple of reasons. Your baby is going to hit a lot of development milestones at this time, especially walk. king uh and your baby is also going to have a big transition into feeding especially like around one year the baby is going to start uh, to be like a on a whole uh, solids meal plan so it's going to be quite a period which will be very very demanding it is best that for this one year you talk to your boss about a lot of flexible options that you can get so there are options like work from home there are options like half day half pay there can be options like you come to work for 3 days or 2 days and then rest of the days work from home um you know all of these options can be explored maybe you have a lot of personal leaves that you have not used till now and that's something that you can also use and extend your uh, your paid leave for some more time now assume all of this is not working out then you have to join and uh, you know you got to do what you got to do maybe you could try some adjustment in the hours as per your baby schedule so earlier if you were doing a 9 o'clock shift in the morning now maybe you can look at a 11 o'clock shift something like that or maybe a location change uh, move to a site which is closer to your house so that you can save on travel time but if all of this is also not working out then i would suggest that instead of quitting explore the option of leave without pay so obviously a lot of companies offer leave without pay where you can continue on leave for some more period of time but you won't be get paid for it and that's a good option to settle your baby it may be a slight dent on your pocket because you won't get the salary but you will know that you still have a job intact you know you won't have to start from scratch where you'll have to find a job also and why i'm saying so is that because i'm also working uh, mom a couple of months prior to my maternity leave ending i approached uh you know my boss and i was so fortunate to get a flexible option where i have a work from home op option and i just have to visit office you know maybe twice or uh, thrice in a month and uh, this arrangement has been done for the next one year so you know which gives me a lot of ease and comfort that yes work from home also means a lot of work uh, that i still have to do and you know uh, deliverables that i have but at least i'm there in the house so anything that kabir needs i am there so you know that's why i brought this point up that it's important to at least talk you know somewhere we don't even explore options and then we realize oh this was also possible because with times changing uh, companies approaches to returning moms is also changing quite a lot they are more flexible now they are more considerate now you know companies have daycare centers in the offices only where you can bring your child also they have rooms where you can actually uh, you know uh, for mothers who want to pump uh, breast milk and store also so they are they are moving 
think we are moving towards a time where there is a lot of convenience created so that women can continue to support their children in the initial stages which is the foundation of their life so i think that's why i'm suggesting that that's the first option that you should explore tip number 2 now all of this that i'm going to talk about is now going to start for uh, arrangements that you will make at home so the first thing that you have to do at home is find a caregiver that you trust ideally it should be your in-laws or it should be on your parents those will be the closest people that you can trust with your child if they can take care of your child while you're gone you know maybe your mom stays very close by or your in-laws have moved with you and they can take care of the baby nothing like it but let's say that you know they are of a certain age where they can't be so actively engaged um, you know because with babies you need a lot of energy especially in these growing years then it's a good idea to hire a nanny or a maid for those like 8 to 10 hours that you'll be away and let the nanny take care of the kid but under their supervision so you know you'll be rest assured that they are still watching all the time when she's feeding when she's playing when she's doing any activities with the baby they are watching so that you know whatever care that you expect you know you will know that somebody is at least somebody you trust is overlooking that number 3 you know something that i don't idly recommend but if you don't have an option you absolutely have to do it uh, is a daycare center the ideal age for a play school or a daycare is like a 2 to 2 and a half years because you know by that time the child's immunity is really really good and the child has also developed quite a lot but if you have to then you have to look for a daycare center but do your homework right safety hygiene uh, you know reviews all of these things are uh, something that you should know before putting your child in a daycare center tip number 2 is make the caregiver a part of your routine now between 3 to 6 months is a time when uh, your baby starts to come into a routine it's a good time to establish a routine for your child so what you need to do is that your caregiver should ideally start becoming a part of your routine 2 months prior to you joining back and one month prior to you joining back they should be the there should be a role reversal so they should be the one doing everything that they have to do in those 8 to 10 hours and you should be taking a back seat no matter how much you want that you know last few days are left and let me do this but that's not how it will be easy it will be easy if for one month you let them just see everything let them know about everything let them be engaged let the child also feel that there are two people engaging it's not my mom only or you know suddenly the caregiver has come and hence the child is not responding to them it should be both when the child sees that you are also actively and happily engaging with the caregiver the child is more comfortable and secured about being with that caregiver and one month prior when you let them do things and you take a back seat then you get more secured and comfortable about the caregiver handling your child so that's something that you should do and at least a week or two prior you should try and be gone during those 8 to 10 hours and you don't have to go outside but be uh, busy in things at home so that you know in those 1 to 2 weeks it's a proper production under supervision like proper practice is happening and just in case there's an emergency or just in case you know the caregiver still needs help with building that confidence you are still in the house tip number 3 is create a do's and don'ts list now every child has a do's and don't right the a child could be prone to certain allergies a child could be prone to not having certain types of food uh, a child may have discomfort staying in diapers for too long certain clothing might not be right you know the ac temperature needs to be a certain way so there's a whole list of how things need to be so remember you have been the closest to your baby all this while and expecting your caregiver to just know it all is absolutely not right so create a do's and don'ts list explain it to them very very properly in that one month where they are the ones who are practicing see how things are moving and keep updating that list as your child grows the do's and don'ts are going to change especially when it comes to food and engaging your child because that's going to be different so make sure that they understand it really well also ensure that they understand how hygiene needs to take care be taken care of and they un- understand how to engage the baby remember the times when they used to engage us in like old times 30 years back versus now times have changed completely expecting them to engage the child 
like you do is not possible till the time you tell them and you teach them how different toys or how different activities need to be done tell them when is a good time to take the baby to the park what activities to play with the baby in the park when to read books to the baby what books are good for the baby you know different type of engagement but make sure they also learn even if it means that teaching them like a kid because of their age but ensure that they learn only then they'll be able to engage the baby in a similar way Tip number four is make a baby station for easy access. We've done a video on how we organize baby station for Kabi. So if you want some ideas from there, you can take that. But why I'm saying so is that your caregiver should not be in a panic mode for things that are absolute necessities. Diapers, skincare, um, uh, milk, bottles, you know, all of these things when put at one place will give them access very easily and they will not be in a panic mode, which means their attention on the baby will be with a free mind instead of being in a panic mode. Tip number five is free them up from any other responsibilities for those eight to ten hours. Now, even if this means that it can be a slight dent on your pocket, I think you should take it and you should consider it as an investment for your baby's future. Now, what I mean here is that whatever eight to ten hours that you will be gone, List down all the activities or all the responsibilities that your caregiver will have, you know, things like they will also have to take a bath, they will uh, maybe have to cook lunch, you know, they might have to get involved in cleaning. So all these activities are things that you have to free them up from. Why? Because somewhere, you know, on their mind, when they know that they have to do all of this, they'll be under a lot of stress and they won't be able to engage the baby with a free mind. And, you know, let's be respectful of their age. When in our age and we spend so much time with the baby, we get so exhausted and so tired. Imagine if they have to do that for those 8 to 10 hours when the baby is absolutely active, how stressed out or how tired they will be. So... You know, the way it needs to work is that whenever the baby takes rest, they also take rest instead of then working on different things. So for lunch, you know, ideally you should invest in a, a cook who can come and cook lunch or you make lunch in the morning before going to work. For cleaning, normally everybody has a maid who comes and does cleaning. If uh, you cannot afford that, then that's something that you should be doing in the morning. Or, you know, if you live in a place where uh, it's not very dirty, it's not very polluted, cleaning done once in, proper cleaning done once in a week is also fine. You have dishwashers that can take care of the dishes. So, you know, all of these are fine. Bathing, you know, let them bathe in the morning while you are around. You can take care of the baby so that they can bathe and they can get ready for the day so you know a lot of moms feel that in the morning when I have some time let me spend that time with the baby and then go off to work I don't feel like that I feel that if your baby has to be away from you throughout the day then let that being away mode start right from when the baby is up so that they understand that since morning to evening my mom's gonna be away she's gonna be busy in taking care of responsibilities for me and the house and once she comes back she's all mine that is the time you know when when you have to make every minute count so the morning time hold your heart back and just uh, work on things that will help your caregiver have a free mind throughout the day and in the evening make a transfer of responsibilities don't cook dinner let them cook dinner you know any other thing that you should be uh, taking care of let your partner or let them take care of it so that you can just absolutely spend every minute with your baby which your baby will start looking forward to also tip number six and very very important is don't keep calling and checking on your baby you know uh, think about those times when you spend time with your baby how many times do you even know where your phone is kept how many times do you attend phone calls how many how much time do you have to uh, do text messages all that you end up doing with your phone is idly you don't use your phone even if you do is you take pictures of your baby or you make videos so why expect it from somebody who as it is has not done this for a very long time and suddenly have a big responsibility of taking care of your child the way you do so why expect this from them you know tell them that you will come back home and then have a nice conversation about how the day went what did the baby eat how was he engaged you know everything that you want to talk about but during the day don't do this by doing this you're only stressing them that they need to have a phone handy to get a proof of concept and keep sending it to you and you know that way you're pressurizing them quite a lot which is absolutely not required 
Tip number seven, advanced preparation helps. So now you know that you will be out from Monday to Friday. So what you need to do is on Saturdays and Sundays, plan for your groceries, plan for any essentials for your baby, anything that the house will need in terms of rationing or anything. So that during the week, the caregivers don't have to panic that, you know, something has got over and they need to get that. Or you also don't have to end up going out, uh, you know, once you return back from work, you go out to the market to get some stuff. You don't want to miss out on any time away from your baby once you're back from work. So Saturdays and Sundays will be very important to relax, but at the same time, take control of how your coming week is going to be. Tip number eight is on feeding and this is very important because I get a lot of questions around this. So if your baby is on solids feeding, it's very easy. What you need to do is create a food chart, a balanced diet for throughout the week. What food will the baby have in breakfast, snack, lunch, dinner? You have to write it down. Even if it is like a khichdi, you should mention that what all vegetables will be along, uh, given along with that khichdi or will go into that khichdi so that your caregiver is not not in a panic mode as to what needs to be given or how it needs to be made. It has to be crystal clear so that all that they have to do is make the food and feed the baby. This way you will be rest assured that your baby is eating good food throughout the week and uh, your caregiver will also be rest assured that they don't have to constantly think about what to make for the baby where you have to be really careful. If the baby is on milk, then the only option that you have is that when you're away, uh, the baby is fed through a bottle. Now, when it comes to bottle, a lot of women think that bottle is associated with only formula milk or cow milk, but that's not the case, guys. If you're making good breast milk, then you can absolutely use a breast pump. You can pump milk, put it in the fridge, uh, thaw it, bring it to a room temperature and offer it back to the baby so that a baby can have breast milk also through bottle. So you don't really have to worry that what will happen now. I've done a separate video on breast milk storage guidelines. I've done a separate video on what to do if the baby is refusing bottles. So if you need help on those topics, go check out those videos. The next tip is start making notes much in advance about baby patterns. So one thing I used to do right from the start is I used to have this big notepad and I used to draw columns under for each category baby feeding baby pooping baby uh, peeing baby active baby sleeping and when when I used to give uh, bottle milk to my baby I used to even write the quantity he would have at each time when I used to breastfeed my baby I would write the duration for which my baby's taken breastfeed all of these things help you understand your baby's patterns. Now, human body is excellent at giving signs. You know, uh, it's about how closely you monitor those signs to understand what is the requirement. Obviously, there will be times that, if, that even you as a mother will not understand. But, you know, still an attempt to understand those signs can be easier when you start drawing out uh, these notes, which will help you understand patterns. So like this, it will be easier for you to tell your caregiver that in each feed, you need to give, for example, four ounces of milk. You know, imagine a situation where they make milk for the baby, but they just made three ounces because that, they thought that's appropriate. Now, even after that three ounces, half an hour later, the baby is crying. They feel that the baby is crying, uh, maybe because of some other reason, but maybe the baby is crying because he's still hungry and they will not understand that correlation because they will feel the baby just fed. So things that you took you time to understand for the last six months is something that you need to make easier for them because they haven't got that time to closely understand your baby. So ensure you write things down. The next step is keep some bonding activities to yourself. I feel that, uh, you know, certain bonding activities should just be with the parents. So something like a massage and a bath. It is great time spent with the kid. The kid enjoys it, especially bath. I think every kid enjoys it. If your partner is able to do it, nothing like it obviously uh, you both can switch uh, the responsibility but don't let it be with the caregiver is what I suggest obviously uh, it could be different in your case um, you know if your partner can't do it then it's a great activity to do towards the uh, night a lot of people make massage and bath as part of the nighttime routine which relaxes the child quite a lot the child has a great engagement with the parent feels satisfied that he spent some nice time body gets very relaxed and the child can have a nice sleep so some activities you got to figure out that you need to keep to yourself no matter how busy you are 
so that's about it these were my tips now some closing comments from my side see it's always no matter how well you prepare no matter how much you have you have planned for things even if it's your partner taking care of the baby you are going to have emotional breakdowns when you go to work you will cry you will miss your baby you will constantly your mind will be back home you will feel why am i doing all of this i've become a mother i may not get this opportunity uh, again you know i just need to live every minute uh, and you may start hating yourself also that's absolutely normal you may feel that your baby is hating you you may feel that your baby is now distant from you he's not looking at you he's not smiling at you the same way he's not engaging with you the same way see i would suggest that take a, a you know step back and think about the bigger picture okay uh, the bigger picture really is that over a period of time when your baby starts to get that understanding of how practical life works i feel that your baby is going to respect you a lot because you did something which is a step ahead of what uh, you know all the mothers would do it's very very brave see a mother is very brave right i i have a lot of respect for stay at home moms also because i feel that even a stay at home mom you know she is like on a 24 hour job with the baby life is actually not very easy when it comes to a uh, raising a baby especially in the initial years but the one who goes out and leaves the baby to somebody else you know i think she's she's taken one step ahead of being brave she's supporting her family she's supporting her partner financially which in a way in turn is going to help her baby only will help her uh, his future his uh, present you know there's so much that you'll be able to do if you can give a helping financial hand and over a period of time the child starts to learn and take this as a value that you know men and women are actually equal men and women contribute to the household in an equal way uh, women don't only stay at home just for taking care of responsibilities of the kitchen they actually go out and support the family in a similar way as a father so i feel that you know since my mom has also been a working mom right from uh, my uh, very very initial years me and my sister have hardly seen my mom at home on a monday to saturday because uh, she had this long working hours and we have a lot of respect for her you know we don't hate her i think we love her more for all the sacrifices that she's made for us for all the times when she could not see us achieving different milestones or different developments in life so hats off to all the returning moms do not do not let the emotional breakdowns uh, you know impact you negatively you are strong you've had a great career behind you if you can do something of your own you want to take a break for some time it's absolutely fine you should be doing that if you want to and your financial condition supports you but you know after that break i definitely feel that you should go back and you should work so i hope i've been able to help you a little bit i absolutely respect the fact that everybody's situation is going to be different maybe none of these tips work for you but if they don't work for you and something else is working for you then please help the larger returning moms community by giving a comment below and telling us that what are other things that you are doing to help you ease out the entire transition with that we are at the end of the video please like share comment and definitely subscribe to momcom india thank you